The scientists that are in the Orion Project Network um, have been identified over the last 15 years of our work in this area. And they range from people who have worked in classified projects who uh, have information about electrogravitic, anti-gravity, or over-unity electromagnetic systems to uh, people who have uh, pretty much learned these areas on their own and have been experimenting, uh, to folks who are uh, engineers in electrical engineering and mechanical engineering, to academics uh, uh, that uh, uh, Dr. Loader and, and others in our network have identified who know certain specialized areas that can be brought to bear to solve these problems. So it's a large network and it's global. It's an international network. Uh, I think that one of the key points here is that we have identified the best people that can be identified who know this new area of, of energy research and science. And it's going to be out of this area that the solution to the environmental and energy crisis comes. It's not going to be from biofuels and wind and solar. It's going to be through research in the really new high-tech uh, physics and sciences that deal with the electromagnetic field, um, spin theory, uh, electrogravitic, magnetogravitic systems as they've been described. And these are described on the orionproject.org website. But we've identified the best scientists that are um, living who know these systems and understand these new sciences. The question is, how do you get them all coordinating and working in one place uh, to uh, actually come up with this robust demonstrator uh, or robust system that's not you know a few watts of power but's putting out kilowatts of power reliably uh, that runs you know for years or decades uh, and that's strong enough to be able to then be placed in people's homes so that we can begin to replace the power grid and the coal-fired power plants with these new energy sources that's a very significant R&D effort and uh, many people wonder why we don't have these by now, and I point out to them that, well, they have been developed in classified projects and kept secret, or there are individuals who've gotten pretty far with them, but then they've been intercepted. Uh, in fact, we have a member of our team who uh, had worked at the patent office and had uh, personally seen that there were several thousand patents uh, that had been sequestered away and illegally classified. Uh, that dealt with these sort of technologies because uh, someone uh, who has a vested interest in the conventional oil, gas, coal, energy sector didn't want the public to have them. It isn't about what is uh, you know, technically possible as much as it is what can be strategically protected and moved out. But it is needs, there is a lot of technical work to be done. You can't do this without having a team that's properly funded and properly supported. And that's really why the Orion Project dot org is a, a key uh, new initiative that needs that and our initial budget is around three million dollars to provide just sort of seed funding for these inventors and engineers to get to this this goal of a robust demonstrator uh, the scientists uh, that are working with us are from you know range from PhD academics to engineers to self-taught inventors because unfortunately you can't really go to MIT or Caltech and learn these types of, of sciences. Uh, uh, they've uh, just simply not been allowed into the, the, the mainstream public domain. But there are people for 100 years, dating back to Tesla, who have come up with uh, uh, magnetic motors that tap into what's called a zero point field of energy or this electromagnetic flux field that becomes self-running and over unity, meaning they put out more energy than you have to put into them. Now, I want to comment here, a lot of people will say, well, that's not possible. Well, it is. A heat pump is, is around four times over unity. A heat pump that is running your house, uh, electrical heating uh, cooling system, is actually about four times more energy uh, that, uh, uh, that it does in work than you have to put in in electricity, except it goes into either heating or cooling. Uh, and so there are many ways that that ha happens, uh, and people take it for granted because it's so common. What we want to do is take these concepts and turn them into electric generating power plants so that they begin to replace the conventional fossil fuel plants, not only for, for, for homes and businesses, but also eventually industry and automobiles and cars and trucks.